the silent treatment. So what is the silent treatment? The silent treatment is when you have one person who shuts down all forms of communication with another person. It's generally because they've either um, been confronted or challenged in some sort of way or they're so angry that they don't know how to effectively communicate their anger to the other person. So, and lots of people do the silent treatment. It doesn't necessarily make them a narcissist, but here's the difference. So when a normal person does silent treatment, and again, it's still not healthy, okay? Um, when a normal person does silent treatment, it generally lasts for a few hours or a few days. Uh, the other person knows that they're going to continue talking to them again, but that they just need time to cool down. Um, so they might walk around slamming doors, slamming cabinets, huffing around. Um, that's just their way of trying to process anger. They're not comfortable actually being assertive and saying, hey, I've got this issue and let's talk about it. So if you are the kind of person that does give the silent treatment and you don't know how else to handle things, all you know, a great way to kind of say, to get around this is to say to people, you know what, I'm really upset right now, and I just need to take a time out. We can continue this conversation later. I give me a few hours, maybe later on tonight, or maybe maybe this weekend. But I just I'm done talking about it right now. Okay, and just giving a person a time frame for when you are willing to reopen communication. So a normal person might do something like that. They might go for a walk, and then once they've calmed down, then they start the conversation again. And you know, ideally only starting the conversation when you can make sure that you're being respectful and um, treating the other person with respect and dignity, right? Because anything less than that is abusive behavior, really. So narcissists, when a narcissist gives a silent treatment, they are doing it to, to punish the other person. And it's very much a grooming kind of behavior. And it's showing them, if you bring up, if you challenge me in any sort of way, then this is what's going to happen. And so here's where it gets interesting. With a narcissist or sociopath or other type of you know emotionally manipulative person, them being challenged, it could be real or it could be perceived. And so when you experience silent treatment or other abuse that seems to come on unprovoked and out of left field, it's because that manipulative person is, they are perceiving that they're being attacked in some sort of way. But it's not, they're not in reality. It's very illogical, it's very irrational behavior, but in their mind, they are, it's very logical and it's very rational and they are 100% justified in whatever actions they take. This is really hurtful behavior, but it's, it's even more crazy making if um, this kind of behavior is linked up to a perception of a challenge. So let me give you an example of that. So let's say, for example, you were to say something like, hey, I like your haircut, right? And they were to say, out of the blue, well, you know, what are you, what are you saying? You don't love my haircut, and so what? You don't think I'm attractive? What you think you can do better than me? You, the target of this is really caught off guard. They're like, wait, what? And so it's, but in that manipulative person's mind, they have been challenged. In their mind, they are being abused. Like they are perceiving a seemingly innocent comment as something abusive. They're attacking and they're going on the defensive. But in their mind, they're 100% justified for it. It's completely illogical and irrational behavior, and they're, they're. You cannot be logical with an illogical person. It just doesn't work because there is no telling how their brain is processing things. It's very, very strange if you've ever encountered this. It's such a break from reality and it's so very strange. Um, you know, like I was saying, it can really erode the victim's sense of reality and their self-esteem because narcissists tend and sociopaths tend to project everything that they're doing onto the victim. So if they're challenged or, or this perception of challenge, right, in some sort of way, then they spin it around and then they lash out. And now it's all about you, right? Oh, well, I think you're cheating on me. I think you're lying. I think you're the abusive one. And so now if the victim is taking this abusive person's reality as true, because it's not, but if they are taking this person's reality as truth, they're trying to make sense of it. And then they often try find themselves justifying, no, I haven't been cheating on you. I haven't been stealing from you. I haven't been doing all of these awful things that you're accusing me of. And oh my gosh, why do you think this? And so then they start trying to, to really prove themselves and they're walking on eggshells and they're going above and beyond trying to repair this relationship. And they don't even know how this relationship got so off track because this behavior is so strange and it's so out of the blue. The other reason narcissists do silent treatment is it's an excuse for them to line up their next source of supply. So it can be you know, either, well, and generally, of course, it all, all, all always goes back to them trying to gain power and control over the, everything, over their, their victim, over the situation, over themselves, over everything. But if they feel challenged or criticized, then they're just like, oh, well, okay, then who needs you? In their mind, they're totally justified in cheating or um, kind of just, you know, doing whatever they're going to do. And they feel, they, they feel justified in doing that. 
it's always the victim that has the issue. It's never the narcissist's fault. And even if you do get an apology from a narcissist or a sociopath, it's 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 minimal. Like, well, I told you, I, you know, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. And so, and then in their mind, that's an apology. But there really there really is never any sincere accountability for their behavior um, because their actions don't ever change for the long term. So silent treatment with a narcissist, this can go on for uh, hours, it can go on for days, it can go on for weeks, it can go on for years. And it can be them all of a sudden not responding to texts, it can be them not answering the phone, it can be um, them you know, making the, the target of their behavior really, really uncomfortable. So making it a point to make, to just have their victim twist in the wind. Like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And that's really the feeling when you're going through something like this. That's exactly how you feel of what on earth? I am so sorry. Like, what did I do that? I did not do anything to deserve this. And so a lot of victims find themselves apologizing. They're just trying to get their partner to, to open up communication and to get out of this awful tension that's going on. Um, when a narcissist shuts down communication for months or years, that tends to be more with relatives, like their children or, um, you know, other family members and it's it's kind of this ultimate form of power and control right of saying I'm disowning you. like you're done you're done and then they do this oftentimes to their children and so this is again incredibly painful especially for children especially for young children who don't understand what's going on and who internalize all of this and so then they think what did I do that's so wrong that my father is no longer talking to me or that my mother is no longer talking to me and they might find themselves, well, I'll act better, right? I'll do whatever it takes to do in order to win your love. It's, it's kind of how, what that boils down to. Across, you know, whoever is receiving the silent treatment, tend, that kind of tends to be their mentality of, I love you so much and um, I want this to work, so I'll just do whatever it takes in order for this to work. But the problem is, we're not dealing with the person who is sharing our same reality. And so that's why these, these, this abuse, the silent treatment, the verbal abuse, the emotional abuse, psychological abuse, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, the financial abuse, what have you, comes on at seemingly very random times. So you could be having a really great time and then next thing you know, this person feels challenged or criticized and they don't take it well and they cause a huge scene and then it's silent treatment and then it's, um, you know, the victim's walking on eggshells and they're trying to, to do things to get their partner to open up again. But it's very, very destructive behavior. It's definitely not okay. If, again, if this is something that you do, this is something that you can work on and just giving a person a time frame of when you're wanting to reopen communication and to work towards improving your communication can help. But if you're on the receiving end of this um, and you're with a highly manipulative person that's doing this kind of behavior, and if you call them out on it and they don't change, um, just kind of realize abusive people tend to get worse with time. They don't tend to get better because the more time passes, the more their bad behavior tends to escalate and the more they realize they can get away with. 